In this video, I'm going to share with you how to get the correct sleeping bag fit. How do you figure out what the sleeping bag size is and should be for you? And then also the different aspects and considerations. Check, watch the end of the video because there's a lot of things that you want to watch for to get the correct sleeping bag fit so you don't freeze your keister off. It's a big, big deal to get the correct sleeping bag fit because the number one thing that all sleeping bags suffer from, it doesn't matter whether, matter? Yes, matter, whether it's down or synthetic fabric or synthetic insulation. It's of course a synthetic fabric. The synthetic insulation is the most crucial thing and I'm gonna save that to the end of the video. But you'll probably figure it out by then. Now, by the way, I do have a book on exactly this of how to deal with that Adventure Expedition 1 tells you about sleeping bag selection and the important things. By the way, I've got a book, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold. That will tell you all the little tricks and tips I'm gonna share in this video to keep your tootsies warm. And I have been to the South Pole and Antarctica and in Greenland and climbing on Denali. So I'm very well versed in how to choose a proper sleeping bag that fits you in the correct way. So what I'm gonna do is cut down to the floor here and show you the different aspects and keys and the number one reason at the end of the video, wait for it, of why you need to do this correctly. So when you're first looking at the sleeping bag, the number one thing that is going to be most important to you is the sleeping bag length. Usually manufacturers come in three different lengths. This is all a, metro, or a standard system, five foot six, six foot and six foot six. The six foot is about 183 centimeters. Just to give you an idea, the, the, uh, the six foot six would be one, almost 200 centimeters. So the number one thing when you're considering sleeping bag is the length. Now you'll see that this sleeping bag is actually much longer than I am. Why is that? <laughs> because this is the factor no one thinks about. This is why you're watching this channel about four season adventuring is because, you know, like, oh yeah, I just want it to fit me perfectly. I don't want extra space. Bam. Where are you going to put your satellite phone, your GPS, your watch, your phone, like our glorious phones? Where are you going to put your four or five water bottles? Where are you going to put your extra electronics, your iPad, whatever, all your doodads, and including all the other things that you cannot allow to freeze every night. If you get a sleeping bag that fits you exactly, let me tell you, you're screwed, folks. You need to get a sleeping bag with an additional, if you're going to cold places in four season, I cannot recommend enough to get a sleeping bag that is at least six inches longer than you are, or about 14 or 15 centimeters, Sound about right? Yeah, about 15 centimeters longer than you are because of all the junk that you have to put in your sleeping bag so you stay warm. That is a huge thing people forget. I do talk about that in Adventure Expedition 1. Don't make that mistake because, oh, I, I'm six foot tall, I'm gonna get a six foot sleeping bag. The moment you pack things in there, what's going to happen? I'll tell you at the end of the video, and that's the misery factor you do not want to have go wrong. The next thing that you need to figure out in sleeping bag fit is actually what side the zipper is going on. If most of us, 95% of us are right-handed, you would think, oh, I prefer a right-handed zipper. Not quite. However, because I actually have the left-handed zipper on some bags and the right-handed zipper on others, because depending on what side of the tent I sleep. Also, by having a left-handed zipper, even though I'm right-handed, when I get in the sleeping bag, this is a factor of fit too, because it's not just fit, it's usability. For whatever reason for me, it's actually easier for me to reach outside the zipper and the sleeping bag and zip it up with my left hand. If you want lots of snags and lots of misery and harder times trying to zip up your sleeping bag, try and zip it from the inside. <laughs> Forget it. So if you zip it from the outside, it makes a huge difference in your experience. So the next factor you have to consider is girth. Are you a big, broad shoulder man? Do you maybe have a larger chest, ladies? Or are you a very small, svelte sort of person? That's a good question. Most sleeping bags have a few different options of what's called girth. And the best way to figure out the girth 
is to get one of those cloth tape measures and measure across the broadest part of your chest, whether you're big in front, big in the side, or whatever, because if you make that mistake, I'll tell you at the end why it's gonna freeze you. So you need to measure your girth and look at the sleeping bag specifications. So when you zip the sleeping bag up, it actually fits your body, but you have room. Again, you do not want it perfectly form-fitting because if it's extra cold, you need to put on a few layers, maybe you need to wriggle around in your sleeping bag, you're gonna end up with the misery factor. I'll tell you at the end of the video, boy, oh boy, you make this mistake and it's going to be huge. Also, if you're really going to invest in sleeping bags, make sure you get a sleeping bag with a baffle in it. If your sleeping bag doesn't have a baffle, it baffles me why you're going to be miserable. So this is a huge, huge key, is I actually prefer my sleeping bags to have quite a bit of space. In this particular sleeping bag, I've got almost a foot, or the, the, that's about 25 centimeters, you know, 12 inches or 25 centimeters of extra space, because by the time I wrap this bag around and I wriggle around and fight with the bag, it's a huge difference. Now, uh, one of the factors too is the construction. If it has continuous baffles or fixed baffles, continuous baffles, ha ha ha, they allow you to adjust the temperature of your sleeping bag. That's a magic trick. So this fit factor is a really big thing. I like to have this with this much space. Now, if you're a small person and you get a ridiculously huge sleeping bag, that is a mistake because you're carrying extra weight, which always stinks, but also you're going to start getting air motion, which will freeze you. So if you're thinking, oh, I should just get the biggest one with the biggest amount of space, don't do that either, because that'll cause you problems. So what you wanna do is measure your girth around your chest, around your hips, and then also in your feet. Because I sleep with down booties virtually all the time, except in summer. Check out links in the description, because it makes a huge difference in my experience of never having freezing feet. Yeah, that's right, folks. Don't have freezing feet. It is so easy to avoid. So that factor of length, and then girth, but also, does this sleeping bag have a neck baffle system? Yes, it does choke you out. It is a little bit claustrophobic, but the rectangle versus mummy bag, if you're going somewhere four season and you're going somewhere cold, trust me, mummy bag is the only choice on earth. Don't bother with anything else. You go with a rectangle bag, that rectangle, the air will come in, you will freeze your booty off. Some designs are a little bit wider at the bottom. That is a personal choice. I tend to put most of my water bottles and everything right around my legs and my midsection, and then I'll line my electronics up and down the sides with my gloves and everything else to dry. By the way, did you think you needed, or figure out you needed space? to have to dry your socks, gloves, liners, boot liners, everything in your sleeping bag, you need space, not just for you, maybe a tiny little jacket or whatever you're gonna wear, but you gotta put all of your moist clothes in your sleeping bag first, it's gonna stink, but <laughs> more importantly, that is going to increase your girth and bulk more than you have any idea, so that way you have warm, dry liners, boot liners, gloves, jacket. I always put my morning clothes in my sleeping bag. I always put my day clothes in my sleeping bag to try them. So I literally am sleeping in a dump of stuff. It makes a huge, huge difference. So don't just measure your girth, but lay down, put everything like your long underwear, your shirt, your jacket. What do you use for a pillow? That's right. <laughs> if you get the sleeping bag at the right height exactly for you and you get a pillow, that is the thing. And now I'm gonna tell you the number one mistake you can make when you get the wrong size sleeping bag. And this is the number one reason. That's why I promised you to the end of the video. Well, why would I put this at the front of the video? This is the whole thing that matters. If your sleeping bag does not fit and you begin compressing the insulation and the down and you think, oh, good big deal, it fits me perfectly. That is the coldest mistake you will ever make potentially in your life because down does not keep you warm if it is compressed and squashed. 
Synthetic insulation does not keep you warm if it is squashed and compressed, if you're a big person, front side, but also all the gear and things you've got to put in your sleeping bag, your boot liners, your water bottles, your long underwear, your shirt, your jacket for a hood, the whatever else you got wet, your electronics, your satellite phone, your emergency transponder, your GPS, your phone. Holy schmazoli, there's a lot of stuff in your sleeping bag to consider. So it's not just that. Now, in conditions where you don't have all, have all that junk in your sleeping bag, is it gonna be an issue? Yes. But you either buy a bunch of sleeping bags with variations or you buy something slightly larger so you can snuggle up, maybe put your extra jacket in there. So in the morning, when it's zero degrees Fahrenheit or minus 17 degrees Celsius, you are not picking up your cold, clammy, horribly freezing long underwear shirt and everything else and putting it on. That's a rookie mistake. Pros put all their stuff in the sleeping bag. So when you unzip and you change, yes, your skin is exposed to the cold air, but oh, and ladies, you know, you get your bra as well. <laughs> yeah, do you really wanna put on a minus 20 bra? Whew, yeah, no way. But I certainly wouldn't, I don't wear bra, but that could be an issue. But boy, if you put all of your stuff in your sleeping bag that you're going to wear the next day and you put it on, oh gosh, it's so freaking satisfying. So there you go. Hopefully this has been very helpful for you. And also, holy moly, I'm so sorry. I forgot to credit Mark Cummings, a viewer and also hopefully subscriber, Mark Cummings. Thank you so much for the idea talking about sleeping bag fit. And to your subscribers out there, please leave a comment in the video about other questions you have about adventuring, outdoors, expedition, travel, and four season camping and climbing. Thank you very much for watching. Please check out links below to my books, Antarctic Tears, Lost at Windy Corner, Adventure Expedition One, How to Keep Your Feet Warm in the Cold, The Jackson Hole Hiking Guide, The Most Crucial Knots to Know, and the 2024 Total Eclipse Guides, as well as my shows, World Beyond and Antarctic Tears. Please like, comment, and subscribe to the channel to support me so I can keep bringing this information to you. Enjoy your sleeping bagging.